You see, over the years, I've had several old men kind of be my mentor, okay? There was Rancid Crabtree after my dad died, and there were others. And recently, even though I'm an old man, I, I still need an old man. Most of you old men won't understand that, but all of you old women will. <laughs> At any rate, I found a new old man. His name is Old Ed. And, and he lives two blocks away from me. I just discovered him three years ago. But he is really old. He's a hundred years old. Now that is old. He cannot see very well anymore. He can hardly hear. And even when he races about, you can't detect motion with the naked eye. <laughs> I guess taking him on a camping trip was a fool thing for me to have done. <laughs> but he kept after me all the time. Let's go burn some food over a campfire like we used to. You'd think that by the time a man entered his second century, he'd mellow out. That was not how old Ed appeared when he came storming, and I do mean storming, up onto my porch early one morning last summer. That was the most miserable, two-timing, double-crossing, backstabbing, egg-sucking, contemptible trick you ever pulled on me, McManus. Ought to have you arrested for malicious mischief perpetrated against a helpless old man, depriving me of my only means of transportation. You steal the keys to a man's car, I wouldn't put it past you to murder him in his sleep. And I don't discount that for one second. Good. <laughs> because I think about murdering you in your sleep all the time, Ed. <laughs> Only reason I took your car keys is quite simple. You can't see more than six feet in front of your face anymore, Ed. And the last time out, you, you, you just... Ran over the Murphy's dog. I did it on purpose. <laughs> Ain't nothing worse than a stupid dog. If a dog don't know enough to get out of the way of a motor car, it deserves to get run over. When you think about it, I've done the Murphys a favor, <laughs> unburdening them of that worthless creature. But do they have enough simple gratitude to send me a thank you? No. <laughs> they do not. Ha! Ah. Dog was tied to their porch, Ed. <laughs> Couldn't get out of the way. <laughs> well, what was that pink thing I wiped out? One of the plastic flamingos on their front lawn. <laughs> well, they should be grateful for that. The rest of the neighborhood sure is. Ah! I didn't come over here to fuss about some stupid dog. I got a favor to ask. I want you to take me camping one last time, up to Huckleberry Camp on Kelly Creek. <laughs> and then when we get... What? What? Don't you use them swear words around me. You know I can't stand... I'm going to leave if that's what you're going to do. I'm out of here. You know, if my dear departed wife heard you use language like that, my dear old... What's her name? <laughs> She'd take a broom to you, that's for sure. Ed, Ed, Ed. You can't see. Your pulse hasn't been detected in a decade. <laughs> and you want me to drive a hundred 
year old man, 85 miles up into the mountains just to go camping? What's your point? <laughs> I did it. Probably shouldn't have, but then I got to thinking, you know, wait a minute, wait a minute. He, he might have some pearls of wisdom, a hundred years old, you know, that he could pass on to me. That didn't happen. <laughs> Actually, the whole trip was a little strange. And probably because Ed had managed to concoct an entirely new method of breathing every time he fell asleep on that trip. Uh, I can only describe it as the interrupted wheeze. Maybe you know someone who is afflicted with it. It goes something like this. those little silences resounded in the car like a bomb going off. <laughs> and his storytelling wasn't any less irritable, I can assure you. I recollect once, ah, Pin Toe Jack and I trapped a bear in a school bus. <laughs> we got it just for a cabin, you know. The school bus, not the bear. But then the bear, he didn't want to get out of there. Pinto Jack gets mad. He yells out, oh, I'm tired of waiting. I'm going to rush in there and chase that dang varmint out. <laughs> and what happened? I'll tell you what happened. Oh, oh, oh. Pindo. Uh -huh. Ed, what happened? Ed, what ha Ed! What do, you, what do you mean? I've been asleep. What, what do you mean, what happened? Did you, did, you, did you run off the road or something? No, Ed, with the bear. The bear? What bear? <laughs> I had lots of run-ins with bear in my time. I recollect once, Pinto Jack and I <laughs> trapped a bear in the school bus. We got it just for camping, you know. The school bus, not the bear. <laughs> Pinto Jack gets mad. He yells out, I'm tired of waiting. I'm going to rush in there and chase the dang garment out. Ha <laughs> ha! And he gets up ahead of steam, like you never seen. He hits the doors to that bus. They burst open. But inside the bus, the bear stands up. Ha ha. <laughs> Dagnabbit! Dagnabbit, where, where are we? Where are we? Just pulling in to Huckleberry Camp right now, Ed. Ha ha! Huckleberry Camp. Yeah, yeah on Kelly Crick. Huckleberry. Huckleberry Camp. Huckleberry. Huckleberry. <laughs> 
Why in tarnation are we all the way up here? Why would you drag a hundred year old man 85 miles up into the mountains? You ain't planning on murdering me for my money, are you? You have money, Ed? <laughs> I couldn't murder him. Not that the old codger didn't deserve it. He most certainly did. No. I couldn't murder him for one very simple reason. I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> I didn't know the end to his story. <laughs> Neither did you. <laughs>